I'm going to teach about pastors who embarrass themselves. Oh. Oh, pastors who embarrass themselves. So I'm going to teach you how to become a pastor to embarrass himself, all right? Now, how you can embarrass yourself as a pastor, so this is really good stuff. You, you all want to watch this video. That way you can catch how I can embarrass myself, okay? How Pastor Gene Kim can embarrass himself and how other pastors out there can embarrass themselves is by doing in this method. Okay, so first method is this, is that the first thing how pastors can embarrass themselves is that they are not in right doctrine. So that's the number one priority. Look at 2 Timothy 4 and verse 2. Preach the word. That's the pastor's job, right? Amen. Preaching the word. Be instant in season, out of season. Reprove, rebuke, exhort with all what? Long suffering and what? Doctrine. For the time will come when they will not endure sound doctrine. But after their own lust shall they heap to themselves teachers having itching ears and they shall turn away their ears from the truth and shall be turned unto fables." So that's the pastor's job. The pastor's job is how he embarrasses himself is he fails in 2 Timothy chapter 4 is in all right doctrine. You know another thing is this? Another thing is this. How pastors embarrass themselves is not when they disprove and they point out right doctrine and they also be sarcastic and heavily criticize false prophets. That's not how they embarrass themselves. They would like to, po they would like to chop off little clips of me when I guess when I had a bad coffee morning or something. And then they think that they can post that up where I can bash some false pastor out there. And then they'll make, oh, that pastor just embarrassed himself. Uh, no, if it comes to right doctrine, that verse says I'm supposed to rebuke, right? Amen. Not only Amen. that, I think Jesus really embarrassed himself more than I did. At least I did not go to some anti-Semite conference and start to roll down tables and burn their DVDs. At least I'm not doing stuff like that. But Jesus Christ and Matthew, what? What did he do? He dumped the tables. He, I guess he embarrassed himself. Is that the right wording to use if you want to use that? And then whipped people out of the marketplace. And then he ranted one chapter long, Matthew 23, against two false prophets. There's one thing that I do. <clears throat> you see me so into thousands. You see me deal with people who are in wrong doctrine come to our church. We show love. Amen. And we also show understanding. Amen. And you got to realize this. You could have been lost and damned like them, even, and that includes homosexuals and liberals. Amen. You could have been one of them. That's right. But with, and Jesus Christ did the same, showing mercy with what? Prostitutes, yep. publicans, and sinners. Yes, and we got to show that to other people. But I show zero respect to people who ruin the souls of men Amen. and women Amen. and children. Amen. And that's why Jesus embarrassed himself, I guess when he was rebuking false prophets who ruined the souls of people with wrong doctrine. And these can include so-called saved pastors too. And you, they, might, they might not be damning your soul, but they sure are ruining your soul yep. and judging and condemning your soul with false doctrine so that your soul is not fed properly, grown properly, right. walking in the spirit properly, and at the That's judgment right. seat of Christ, what? You are judged for your works, yep. and your souls at works and labors and efforts are ruined. Those people, I don't care. I will point them out and rebuke without hesitation, Amen. period. Amen. Because my Lord and Savior understood that at Matthew 23. Comes to, you know how to tick your pastor off when it comes to souls. When it comes to souls, I, it really ticks me off. Because how hard is it to find Bible-believing truth? And you people online and right. people who came to our church, do you know how hard it was for you guys? Yes, you know why? It's because of the wicked, those wicked pastors out there who produced a maze and a complication where you end up like an atheist 
who's a relativist where it says everything is relative. That's what you come down to in the end. And I have zero respect for people who produces that kind of confusion. So if it comes to doctrine. So here's how you embarrass yourself. How you embarrass yourself is that what? You rebuke <laughs> without right doctrine. Now, you know what's hilarious about some of these uh, false pastors out there? They just rebuke pastor so-and-so, false prophet so-and-so, and they make themselves look legit like they're the right prophet. But how do you know if they don't show you doctrine? That's right. Now, unless you criticize me on the doctrine and the verses that I use for doctrine, and you debunk that and overthrew it, Rather than doing a cheap trick where I'm pointing out some false prophet and heretics out there in an angry moment when I'm in my Matthew 23 moment, okay? Not at a, not at a moment where Matthew 27, Jesus said, Father, forgive them for they know not what they do. And he loved them enough. And if you've seen most of my videos, I don't know why they didn't show that part. Yeah. But they would show this rare part in those moments when I do that. A cheap trick like that, and you do a cheap trick where you do ad hominem, always ad hominem, That's ad hominem right. totally arguments. Because guess what? Let me tell you something, all right? All have sinned and come short of the glory of Amen. God, and I can do an ad hominem with people in this church, and Amen. you can do the same Amen. with me too, don't you think? We all can do ad hominem arguments on each other, and we'd all not get along. So I guess this must prove I'm the right prophet, and Tom's a false prophet because I can point out ad hominem arguments where he came late to church. Oh, 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 yeah. <laughs> right there, John right there, and then everybody. Of course, I'm not pointing out my ad hominem arguments when I came in like 10 minutes, 5 minutes, or text message everybody, I'm sorry, I'm going to be late. <laughs> I don't point out my flaw on that either. But you see that? Look, if you people get fooled, Look at the book of Ephesians. If you get fooled by not looking at doctrine, yep. but at the lives of people, then guess what? You're in for a rude surprise right there. You're no different from people who watch the news media, where they take clips and moments of other people to make them look crazy and dumb. If you guys claim to be truthers and you don't get fooled by those kind of media clips, how can you get so blind and fooled by amateur YouTube clips? That's good. Yeah. That is something even more embarrassing. Preach. Now look at the book of Ephesians 4:14. 4, that we henceforth be no more children tossed to and fro and carried about with every wind of doctrine by the slate of men and what? Cunning craftiness whereby they lie and wait to deceive. They do a crafty job. Yep to point out a flaw yes, and you carry to, you get carried about by their wind of doctrine because they put up some kind of dramatic music at the end like ah, and then you start to cry and then they put some dark music at the background with Gene Kim talking you know yeah. dun 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 you know and that's supposed to scare people by oh you know he must be teaching something wrong really teaching something wrong when they all they point out is ad hominem ad hominem and right. not doctrine not doctrine. Yeah. That is something, that's how you embarrass yourself. That, yeah. Those are pastors who embarrass themselves, see? How you embarrass yourself is that you don't stand for right doctrine. And then you rebuke without right doctrine. By the way, this is how you especially embarrass yourself, okay? If you don't have this one, if you rebuke without right doctrine, you should be especially embarrassed if, uh, if you're like the only one. <laughs> if you're like the only one, I think that's a sign of mental illness you gotta understand. Come on. Now I'm not trying to be funny here. That is actually a mental illness. If you start to rebuke, I mean, have you ever met those kind of people? Yeah. You know, they just rebuke you for this and that, think you're wrong about this and that and that. But then they do it without what? The right argument, the right logic. They just keep doing that, pointing out ad hominem this, ad hominem that, 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 that. that. And then if, uh, if you start doing that and then you got people all around you in your school place, workplace, or even in your family, 
that feels uncomfortable around you and don't agree or side with you, don't you think the problem is with you, not them? That's good. A sign of mental illness is everybody's wrong out there and I'm the one that's right. Yep. Amen. <laughs> that's a sign of mental illness. <clears throat> now, you know what? How there are some pastors who extremely embarrass themselves by using the example of Noah. Well, as it was in the days of Noah, there were only eight people saved by the ark. That's how you really embarrass yourself. So you're telling me that there's only eight people. <laughs> That's a bad example. Eight people around the world who probably who agrees like you do, yeah. and then everybody else, wrong, 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 wrong. Yeah. You're in for bad company. It is true, as it was in the days of Noah, so shall it be in the coming of the Son of Man. All right? At the days of the tribulation, it's going to be a minority. But a minority, okay, here's the one you got to realize. A minority to the world, okay? Yeah. A minority to the world, not a minority to Bible believers. <laughs> Here's an example. Let me use the extreme example of Noah. Okay, let's jump to Noah as an extreme example. If Japheth's wife said, I'm wrong, and Noah is wrong, and Noah's wife is wrong, and then the other sons and the other wives are wrong, okay? If she's the one that points out fellow saved saints who are already a minority to the whole world, and she says, well, he's wrong and I'm right, don't you think that the rest of Noah's family members would kind of think, you're being weird right here? Amen. It's not a minority to the minority. It's a minority to the world. You're a minority to a minority. You got problems, man. Amen. Bible believers, it's really funny. They, uh, you know what's funny with my adversaries online? They don't watch the whole thing. Yeah. All right. I told you many times in several videos, Bible believers are a minority. And the evidence is, you already saw the evidence. Look at our church, okay? That is the evidence. So I already said that many times. But I also stress, we're not a minority where we have this mental illness attitude that we're the only ones that are right less than 20 churches around the whole globe. Amen. Okay, that is something seriously wrong right here, okay? Especially you had 2,000 years of church history, okay? This is really bad, okay? You're less than 20 churches around the whole world. You got to realize this. Even the tribulation, the last days of Noah, are going to have more people than that. Yeah, that's right. Okay? Did you, Revelation 7, it listed what? 144,000? And those are only virgin males, okay? Yeah. And you got to realize this. It's still a mi minority to the whole world, okay? To the whole world, it's a minority, okay? If you got like average two Bible believing churches per state, that's pretty, that's really small, ain't it? That's really a minority. But if you're one Bible believing church covering 10 states right there, I think that's something serious right there. But here's another sign of a pastor who embarrasses himself, okay? This is important to understand. I don't know why people, secular scholars even know this and they can see a cult leader when they see it. Yep. You know what another sign of a cult leader is? This is extremely important. Do you know why our church is small? Because we're scattered. We're not in one place. Yep. We're scattered. A sign of a cult leader is that there's so much a minority that people start moving down. Uh -huh. People That's start good. moving down because they think there is no other church out there except so-and-so down there. And people move down, and that's how you build a bigger church. You see that? People move down to church and make it bigger because there is no other church out there. That's right. If you don't believe me, look at these famous cult leaders. Jim Jones, what happened? He had people moving down. That's why he had hundreds of people. Now that should scare you. If you have a cult church who's such a minority, but they build up people with hundreds, because why? They're all moving down? Yeah. Tell them. That's scary. Yeah. That's like Jim Jones right there. That's why you got to avoid. Boy, especially like they like to use the terms new, 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 and new. Amen. Why? Why? They want to give new. 
because they think they're the only ones who are right right there. Everybody else is wrong. That is something very mentally, mentally wrong and scary, you understand. Okay? You know what we do with our people? We, our church could have gotten bigger if I, said I'm, if, if I said I'm the only one that's right. Or if I had like 10 more scattered far away, and then those are the only ones that are right. But how many people have we seen online asking for a Bible-believing church, and I refer them to their states, and not just America, around the world? That's right. And if you don't have a Bible-believing church that's not English-speaking, if you don't have a right church that's not English-speaking around the world, it's only English-speaking people or one particular country, that's another sign of a dangerous cult. Didn't you know that? In Korea, we're infamous for our own little cults. You know why? It's in our own little nation. No other churches out there have that. Sung Young Moon, those guys, it's only his kind of culture and language out there. And then uh, you got these English-speaking people, and then uh, Filipino, they even have their own little cult growing in the Philippines and other places. That's how cults are. They don't study history. They, this is just secular statistics even. Okay, so this is just common sense. Bible-believing churches, we're all around the world. There's thousands of us around the world. We're in many different languages. But guess what? We're still very small. Because if you average like one or two, sometimes zero, okay, in a particular state around the world of a Bible-believing church, that's really small. That's a minority. That's truly like in the days of Noah. But these guys, see, God was saying minority to the world, but no, these guys are a minority to fellow King James only, dispensational, Bible-believing preachers and we have a history that supports it too yeah. so this is not a cultic thing and people who s suddenly come out and say no that thing's wrong my church is right if I had some member if we had one member in our church doing that wouldn't the normal reaction for you people is to be scared about that yep, that's good. but you see how cults build up many people they get brainwashed because they're not grown in doctrine properly Amen. so it's so sad how many people Follow the teachings of a cult. They go down, I kid you not, there are these King, I'm kidding, I'm not kidding you. These are King James only, fundamental independent Baptist churches out there who will accuse me and accuse fellow King James only Baptist dispensationalist preachers as being lost for hell. Yeah. And there are people who blindly believe in that with yeah. logic and they will use some logic and nitpick verses to kind of indicate that and people get fooled by that, don't you think that's a dangerous cult? Yeah. You should separate. Come on, amen. That is extremely dangerous right there. I don't even go that far. I rebuke false prophets, but I don't say all of them are lost. Even the ones who are uh, like really bad in doctrine, I don't consider them to be lost. I give them a possibility it's possible they could be saved. But this is really dangerous stuff. That's how you become a pastor who embarrasses yourself, and you should avoid those people. The basis, see, the key basis is this. The key basis is doctrine. So pay attention to doctrine, not ad hominem, not, nit, not uh, nitpick clips, not the tone of the music and the tone of the voice, yeah. not by the professionalism of the graphic quality. That's how YouTube, you got to realize this. You got to ask yourself this serious question. Do you not think, do you honestly not believe there is not a YouTube, not a single YouTube cultist out there. That is something seriously you got to ask yourself, especially since YouTube is such free access, you can post it, post it. You don't think cultists will not take advantage of that? Amen. Well, well, how do we, you might be a cult too, Pastor? Well, one, I got so many different Bible believers and I named them several times in videos. So you know I'm not some strange, weird little cult, okay? Because we even have a church directory we refer to you to even in different countries. But number two, that's not the main basis. The main basis is how often have I told you to look at the Bible, I quoted verse after verse, right. and not just one verse like cultists will do. Yeah. I show you verse after verse after verse, and look, don't just watch. That's how cultists fool you. You just watch. Yeah. You don't look at the verse. Did you look at the verses that I mentioned? Yeah, that's 
Did you look and did you pray and meditate before making a conclusion I agree or disagree? Don't agree with what I'm saying and don't disagree with what I'm saying if you did not look at the verse first or paid attention to the verse first. See, that's not what a cultist will tell you. Here's an odd thing about a cultist. One more sign of a cultist, of a pastor. You got to, and I will close it right here. These cultists, what they will do is that they, they will become afraid when some member in the church is shown some right doctrine and a cult leader will overcome that person and tell that person, don't study it, don't investigate the scripture. That's right. That's, That's the good. biggest sign of a cult leader. That's right. That's the biggest sign. I don't do that. I say, look at the verse. Amen. That's why we're here. Amen. All right. That's the biggest sign of a cult leader. So that's how you become a pastor who embarrasses yourself, all right? If you saw that out of me in all these videos and, wow, I embarrassed myself, I, I apologize, you know? <laughs> I should put dramatic music in this one, Ooh, like this, so that you all can avoid me. Come on, you. All right, but if you watch, so I'm telling you, me too, I'm including myself. If you put me or any other pastor out there that gives those kind of cultic signs, avoid them. 